Indianapolis Colts knee-deep in preparation for their game this weekend against the Houston Texans, which is a critical game. 0-1 becomes 0-2 within the division. That's a big deal. You can't start this thing 0-2. How are the Colts going to change what they do, how they do it against the Texans? That's kind of the focus of what we talked about with Shane Steichen. Yeah, I think it's just eliminating the big hits. You know, I mean, there's a certain situation, obviously the fourth and five when we got down in there, like you had to go get it there. But just like other times, when you can get out of bounds, get out of bounds and be smart, you know. There's a time and place for it, but just got to be smart. It's a long season. Uh, take care of your body. Did, did, somebody, did, did him get hurt on that first uh, run? Did that impact play calling at all? No, I mean, there was the one he hit, the, the big one, and then the next one, um, you know, there was a pull read there, and that's where his knee, like, he could have pulled it there, but he didn't, he didn't, you know what I mean, on the zone replay. Um, and then I talked to him on the sidelines. He was like, I'm good. I'm good. So he, he should be fine. Is there a fine line that running quarterbacks, and how do you deal with it with Jalen Hurts? Yeah, I mean, I think there is a fine line, but I think if you go look at it statistically, most quarterbacks, if they do get hurt, if you look at all the numbers, it's within the pocket more than anything. Um, so, Again, we have those conversations, you know, uh, weekly uh, about, you know, when to be smart. Shane, as you had some time to reflect and look at some of the video, how encouraged are you by what you saw from your rookie quarterback? Uh, very encouraged. Um, I thought he did a really nice job. He went to the right spots with the football. Um, uh, completion percentage was good. Um, you know, we had some shots down the field. He was smart with the football. They didn't give him to us, and he checked it down. Um, there's little details to clean up, you know, like there will be every week, but very encouraged with this first performance. How is the Drew Ogletree doing? And is Drew as far as he seems to have to practice the Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he, he's doing well. He's progressing well. Um, he's still in the protocol, um, but he, he's doing really well. And Juju? And Juju, yeah, he's progressing well as well. He's doing good. Was his, absence on, was his absence on Sunday, was it related to the personal matter? Or was that just? It was, a, it was just the, per, the per, well, it was a personal matter. It was a coach decision there for the game, yeah. Okay. Was that Moss by on Sunday? Oh, he's progressing really well. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that Moss is right? What, what do you need to see for him to know that he's right? He's practiced. I mean, he practiced last week. And again, you know, we're practicing again this week to see where he's at. Um, but he's progressing really well. What did you still take from Chad and how? How, how much progress have you seen from preseason to now? I mean, it's a, it's impressive to see where he was at. You know, when I got here in the spring, when he was in there at 5 a.m. grinding, getting his body ready, and there with Richard, uh, re, you know, rehab and doing all this stuff, and then get him in training camp uh, to be back out there again. I, I've said this a million times about him, but it's it's the truth. I mean, the guy's the ultimate competitor, ultimate leader, and he just wants to be out there with his team. Seemed like he was out taking off the field with a lot of third down passing down. Was that part of the pitch count? Yeah, we just also, did. That play was the play for him, the, that series of plays? Yeah, there's just we wanted to limit the pitch count there. You know what I mean? Obviously, he hadn't played in a while. You know, you don't want to put him out there for 75-plus plays. You know? Why that specific? It seemed like third and long. It seemed like clear passing down was the play. Well, why that as opposed to you know, first and 10 or short yard? That was just the decision that we made. That was, I mean, there's no like rhyme or reason for it. That was just the decision we made. Shane, when you went back with the third and fourth down, anything on yourself that you thought? Well, I think we got to be in third and manageable. You know what I mean? We had so many third and longs. We got to be efficient on first and second down so we don't put ourselves in third and long situations. How do you do that? Uh, you got to you got to run it good. You got to convert on first and second down uh, and get first downs. You know what I mean? You get you know second and long and you don't convert on a pass and then you're in another third and long situation. So again, just more efficient on first second down. What sort of appreciation do you have for Robert Stewart and the way that he can impact a play just like, you know, taking on a double team or something? He's phenomenal. I mean, he's one of the, you know, the hard leader of our defense with a couple other guys, but the way he plays and prepares every single way, you can just see it. Um, and the, what he brings to this football team uh, is tremendous from a leadership standpoint and just the physical ability he has inside to set the tone up front with him and Buck is impressive. What are kind of the hallmarks you see from Houston with typical defense with him? Yeah, no, uh, obviously, you know, coming over from San Fran, um, running a very, very similar scheme there. Um, but they're they're physical. You know, he gets those guys playing hard. You know, the corners, Steven Nelson had a chance to be with him in Philly and Stingley, the other, you know, guy on the outside. And obviously, first-round draft pick, who's a very talented player. Uh, Will Anderson is a very talented player. Had a good uh, performance against Baltimore last week. And then their Michael linebacker, Denzel, also had a chance to be around him a little bit uh, with the charge as well. But they play fast. They play physical. Um, and he'll have those guys ready to play. Has the NFL or the NFLPA, as far as you know, made any inquiries into John Taylor being on top of you know, the biggest 
complete last week. We all know why he did. He could pass physical today, which on the surface sounds kind of sketchy. Has, has anybody reached out to you guys to make sure it's only up and up? Yeah, no, and all those things that happen with that stuff, I'll, I'll keep that internal. I'll keep it internal. Shane, will you travel to Houston? Um, we'll talk about that. Why wasn't he at the game? Again, all those conversations, if he's not at the game, I'll, I'll keep all that stuff internal. Did you go back and watch the NFC title game at all, given that there is the same brand aspect to it, or is that not something to do? Yeah, watch, watch a lot of stuff. James. <laughs> 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 Going into week one, you know, all the other talk, your first game, uh, Anthony's first game. How relieved are you now to kind of get week one out of the way and kind of focus on you on week two? Yeah, no, it's it's going to be exciting. Uh, obviously, going into week two, another division opponent uh, on the road. I know it'll be a, a great atmosphere there in Houston. Um, but it's good. Just the week one preparation. Now you get into your routine of what it's going to be each and every week. Uh, and just keep preparing, you know, as best as you can, coaches and players, and making sure we're on point, uh, laser focus with everything we do in meetings and uh, out of the practice field. Jay, what do you think about CJ Stroud coming out this year and what he's done just week one? Yeah, no, he had, he had a pretty good game. Um, obviously, he gets the ball out of his hands quick. Uh, he makes quick decisions. Uh, you know, he's a pure passer. Uh, he can spin it. You know, I watched, obviously, you know, the game, and uh, the ball comes out on time. Um, he sees it well. Um, he's a good player um, that we got to be ready for. A lot of us will compare uh, the number two pick, the number four pick playing each other. Is that is that a good thing for Anthony to like have a competition in that aspect? Is that something he completely ignores? How do you think he'll handle that? Like, yeah, I think he'll be fine. I think with anything, I think a lot of times it's like quarterback versus quarterback. But to me, it's team versus team. You know what I mean? Go out and perform. It's not quarterback versus quarterback. It's the you know the Houston Texans versus the Colts and. Uh, that's what we got to focus on and treat it that way. It yeah. seems like you and the Texans are both in the same mode of where you both have rookie quarterbacks, which only have one week of tape. I'm sure for you it's a benefit, you know, because the Texans don't exactly know how to game plan, but they can say the same. So what are some of the benefits of not having that much tape on the post quarterback? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you can throw wrinkles out there uh, that they haven't seen uh, on tape. Um, but again, yeah, it's a small sample size for both sides of the football. And uh, we just got to be smart and disciplined, you know what I mean? And just play our rules. Uh, play our scheme and go from there. What did you think about Pierce in the first week? Um, I thought he was all right. And I, I can do a better job of getting him the football a little more. Um, obviously, you know, early in the game, he, he only he didn't have any touches. Um, he had the one catch. Uh, I think he had, what, three or four targets, but got to get him going. Him and, him and Pitt didn't have a catch until halftime. Is that kind of what you're referring to, getting involved? Yeah, there's no question. Just all those guys, anything. We just got to get him touches early. And it, took, it took some time to get it going, uh, and I got to do better. Shane, anything you besides this week first road game? I mean, do you think different from a road atmosphere? Obviously, you're traveling. Yeah, no question. I think I think the biggest thing is going on the road is handling the noise. You know what I mean? Handling the noise, going on the road, it'll be Anthony's first road test, you know, with the noise, uh, and just making sure the communication's got to be on point, especially when you're playing on the road. Shane, you've been watching Sirianni, you've been working with Sirianni, you know, for a year. Do you... I feel like I sense some Sirianni in you, the way you answer questions from us. Am I, am I missing something? Am I wrong about that, or did you kind of learn a little bit from him? Um, shoot, I got a great deal of respect for Nick. Uh, he's a tremendous coach. Uh, is that a no? Uh, well, we're, we're different people, but uh, yeah, no, he's, he's a great leader. Um, holds the guys accountable. He's got great detail. Uh, and yeah, I, I learned a lot from him. I mean, the way you, like, for example, the way you keep saying it's on you to get all these things happen that really isn't on you, but it's on you. That sounds like the kind of thing Sirianni used to say around here. He would take a lot of pressure off, off everybody else, and he also try to give credit to everybody else. Yeah, I think you got to you got to take accountability for everything. As a head coach, you got to hold yourself accountable. Uh, it starts with myself, um, and then it's the players holding the players accountable. It's coach to player, it's player to coach, and everyone's got to be on the same page and and don't take anything personal. Uh, that's a part of accountability. Praise them when they do it right. Uh, and when it's not right, we got to we got to get it corrected. What do you mean? Right, so like running game going. Uh, we just got to have a great week of practice. That's that's the biggest thing. We we preach in there. We set our offensive meeting is uh, we got to be on the details. Uh, we got to come off the ball, uh, try to control the line of scrimmage from the start, uh, and go from there. Well, I'm sorry, real quick. The 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 quarterback sneak. I think Jalen Hurts is like 35 of 36. Mm -hmm. Were you shocked when that didn't work? Um, I was a little bit because it wasn't a yard. It was like inches. It was like a half a yard. So we got to be better there. Um, we got to keep getting better at it and go from there. That was awesome. You know, and he, Shane Steichen talking about we can't get behind the sticks. We, we have to have third and manageable. I asked, how do you do that? 
it, I know that you got to run on first down for four and second down, you got to get four and then it's third and two. I know what manageable is. I just wanted to know how you go from being what the Colts were with a bunch of third and eights, third and 10, to being able to get to a third and two, third and three, where it's manageable. And, and it's not a given that you're going to throw the football and throw it in the flat or throw bubble screens or throw crossers or whatever it is the Colts choose to do most often, third and four, third and three. Uh, I, I thought the answer was kind of interesting. I like uh, asking Shane Steichen kind of follow-up questions. I, I think it's interesting to hear him come without any real preparation. I, I think it's just kind of fun. I loved Kevin Bowen's question about whether he's watching San Francisco 49ers tape. I, I thought that the answer was accurate, funny, and and really, really appropriate. We'll see what happens on Sunday. I, I think the Colts going to have a good week.